Welcome to Haxby Shed and Odd Jobs and Stickers 8. We'll have a look at the odd jobs and then the stickers. Now today I've got odd jobs which include not fixing this lawnmower motor. I had to buy another one in the end, but there's some quite good video of me skimming the armature and a couple of other bits. And then removing a seized broken banjo bolt from this valve block from a pressure washer. I've got three stickers from America and one from Australia. So we'll look at the odd jobs first and come back to the stickers and we'll watch a bit of video on the old magic clipboard as usual. Here's another unplanned odd job. I looked at the weather, rain was forecast. I thought I'll just cut the grass before it starts to rain. I got about halfway into it and the motor started going slower and slower and slower on this. Uh, whining. So just a cross point screw here and here. I've got those out already now. Lift this back, pull this off and then to get at the motor you just pull that off and I'll show you the brushes arcing. It shouldn't be arcing like that when there's no load on it. 13 millimeter to get this blade off. I had this off yesterday, so it's quite loose actually. It'll probably fall out the bottom now I'm doing this. I found another screw here. It put up a bit of a fight because of course it gets wet. But there it is. So. Yep, the unit's out now, look. Oh, okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now I'll run it for you and you'll be able to see these flaps here, which form a kind of break. As I run the motor, they sort of fly out upwards, a bit like a governor does. I don't know if there's a centrifugal um, block or something inside that makes them do that. But these are the breaking fingers, I think. You'll see. Hopefully there won't be a big bang with a spring flying off into goodness knows where. There's a couple of plastic flaps here which can catch on this armature. But with a bit of twisting and a bit of a pull it does come off okay. So straight away I can see, look at this burning here on the commutator. So. Um, if I can find what the fundamental problem is, then I can put this on the lathe and I can just skim this commutator. This bearing at the end here, don't know if you can hear it, listen. Well, that needs replacing anyway. Why is nothing ever simple? I can't remachine the commutator in the lathe unless I can get this plastic casing off. And to do that, I'm sure I have to press this pulley off. You can see some marks on here where I've tried to do it with just some vice grips on here but it's just uh, deforming the metal. So I've taken an ordinary washer and I've split it. I'm going to press that on there. Just squeeze it together like that. Hopefully get the vice grips behind that. Heat this up and I can press it off then. I mean just imagine you're in the desert. There's just you and the lawnmower. You need to cut the grass. You have to find a way somehow, don't you? So you use what you've got. Right, here we go. Big blocks, packing, two strips across, this clamping under the washer, these vice grips clamping the washer closed, the C washer. It's blooming tight, I tell you that. Crikey. Uh, I think what's happening is it's smashing the plastic. I'm not sure the bearings on the right side of this. Never mind. I'm trying to sound positive about this, but honestly, I'm so annoyed that I broke this casing. Three pieces came off here. 
and I've managed to push them back together. It's very hard plastic and it clicks into place and maybe I can glue with them with some solvent weld. I have looked for a new motor unit and the cheapest I can find is about £125. Now you might think well why don't you just buy a new mower but they're very much more expensive than that. You know if I can recover it I will. So there's a bearing here and then there's this nut that keys into the brake plate and that nut is pressed on as well. And the casing here was in between these two, the nut and the bearing. If I'd had the casing much higher up, packed it right up here, as I'd pressed this off, the casing would have just moved down. But instead the casing came up against this, you know. Uh, it did cross my mind before I did it. And then for whatever reason I got distracted and, uh, and here we are. So let's see if we can machine this commutator now and recover this uh, armature. When I made this tailstock for jaw, people said, well, what would you use it for? And I've used it so many times now. There's no centers on the end of this armature shaft. So the only way is to clamp it from the outside. Well, this is all a bit tight. I've put a stop on the carriage to make sure I can't move it too far to the right there and into the chuck. It's cleaning up, but you can see the wear on it here, look. As I machine this soft copper, it bridged these poles here. So I've used a craft knife to clear out each space. Well I've tested the motor and it runs and now I need to press this on with the brake mechanism on here. That's the brake material. That's the brake disc. This is the brake spring. Well, despite all the work on this motor, I got it all back together, even with that broken plastic part, was all glued. It runs fine in the lawnmower, but it arcs a lot and it starts to smoke. So I can only presume that there's something wrong with the armature windings. So I had to give it up in the end and I bought a replacement motor which, guess what, looks the same. It was £125, so if you want that in the US, multiply it by 1.25 now, because the pound keeps going down. And it comes complete with the pulleys, and the only mechanical part that's not replaced with this unit is just one bearing that goes there, which is in the mower base, and that's absolutely fine. I've had the mower about 10 years, and you might think, well, Rather than spend this, why not just buy another? But to buy the equivalent mower now, Bosch, would be about £200. And what are you really getting? I mean, um, you know, some fancy gadgets and some pimped up plastics. And when I read the reviews, you know, people say they don't last long. So, you know, I decided to, to go this route. Okay, well, I hope you got something out of that. On to the next job. A friend of mine bought a pressure washer at auction and it was all right until it was not all right because when it got it home it was leaking from one of the unions. This is the brass valve block. You can see here inlet and outlet. This fitting here was brass that screwed in here but this one was steel and it's a kind of banjo nut and there's a banjo unit goes around here and comes off somehow. Anyway, it's all corroded and it snapped off when he tried to tighten it up. So the job is to drill that out and potentially re-thread it. This thread is 3 8 BSP, 19 TPI, and I've got the tap for it. So I'll put it on this angle plate here on my drill press. 
All the edges are square so it's easy to line up. It's an 11 millimeter hole, I'll line it up with that and then we'll drill it out. I think it's about 18 millimeters deep but we'll need to go carefully anyway. Well I am making the assumption that the thread in here is the same as the thread in the other one but it doesn't seem to be scraping any brass off that I can see. I've come to the opinion that this is actually half inch BSP. I thought this was maybe a shoulder that came wider and that the thread was the same as this. But it's definitely not. Right then, three quarters. Gosh, this is getting exciting. Well, this is half inch BSP. Look, there's a thread coming off but I am not super confident that I'm right in the middle. I've switched to a three quarter reamer because then I have a lot more control. And look, you can just see the tops of the threads emerging. Look at that. I can see every thread top all the way around. Come on, don't be difficult. I have to tease these out and try not to lose anything because if it breaks when it's down the hole it'll be difficult to get the rest out. I think that's worth a pint or two, don't you? Here's an odd job, fitting the handbrake adjustment mechanism to these Golf Mark II rear disc calipers and it's one of those jobs where you've got to put in a circlip right down inside a hole whilst compressing a cup and a spring. So we've done it on the drill press. If I release this hopefully this will lift out. There we go. Now if I'll try and show you, uh, hopefully this won't explode into the camera if that does focus. So this is the first one done. We're going to have a go at the second one in a moment. This just looks like a stick, but actually there's a little bit of thought in it because we've machined the end and we've drilled a hole. So the hole goes over this and the end just takes that. So that keeps it in location while we do the operation. So with the mechanism on the end of the stick, so we've got this top hat thing, a spring and a circlip, we can push it down over and then we've got to kind of wiggle around to get this in the right place and make sure that the top hat thing is seated in the recess down at the bottom and when it's in place and it's not yet I'm gonna to have to see to that we can lock it down and then we can work on the circlip right we think we've got the second one done it was a bit of a struggle to get that top hat thing in because it had got a bit bent at one stage but uh, we're just making certain that the circlips are in place. Person making sure circlip is in place. Does it look right? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look too much down that hole. Might have a circlip shape impressed on your forehead. Oh well, I'm going to say that's another odd job done. Yeah. We're just going to do a simulated handbrake turn. Go on then. There you are. Perfect. Well, I hope you enjoyed the odd jobs. We'll start with the sticker from Australia. Mark Presling. You'll see this properly when I get it on the board there. Is that upside down? Um, Prezzo to his friends. And we're going to look at a clip where he's showing us how to drill a hole through thin sheet. And you might think to yourself, well, uh, well, that's not very interesting, is it? You know, I do more, much more interesting things than that. And he's got 188,000 views. That's how interesting it is. And I might get 300 on this. So uh, maybe I should be really drilling holes through thin sheet.
Hey, g'day, it's Prezzo. Welcome back to the shop today. Now, I hope I didn't scare you too much. And just to reassure you, there's no way in the world I would ever try to drill a piece of sheet metal shaped like that in a drill press with a large diameter drill bit. Now, even if you're a complete beginner to metalworking, you would have recognized the danger of what I was about to do. So what I want to do in today's video is to show you a safer alternative to achieve the same result and also a technique that is going to give you clean holes of an accurate size in thin sheet material. So let's have a closer look. These are some sheet materials that you may want to use in your workshop and you may want to be able to drill holes in these. Next up, we've got My Little Mule, which is run by Greg in Ohio. And in this video clip, you'll see Greg working on his Bridgeport mill. Welcome back to the workshop. I'm going to continue now on the Bridgeport mill restoration by finishing the disassembly of the head with this uh, quill housing. I'm going to start with removing the downfeed engagement lever. It's just held in with three socket head cap screws. And once those are out, it just pulls straight out from the housing. Turning my attention to the other side of the quill housing, here I'm removing the four socket head cap screws that hold on the power down feed speed selector. And then we've got Steve from Shark River Machine. He's in New Jersey, and in this clip you can see him reviewing a plasma cutter. Welcome to my shop. This is Saturday, January 1st of 2022. And this video is going to be a follow-up on the last video that I did where I did an unboxing on a Cut 50 plasma cutter from Banggood. This is a plasma cutter that Randy Richard from Randy Richard in the shop did a pretty extensive review on. Uh, he did an unboxing and I hopped online because I was actually interested in one and did a little bit of a impulse purchase. It happened to be on a flash sale so I picked it up with some extra consumables and when I got it I realized that I had to change the plug and I had a couple other changes that I needed to make in the shop. And then last but not least we've got Jim from Jim's workshop and he's in Minnesota. He's a very quietly spoken guy and he's telling us about his Unimat lathes. We'll start out with this one. This is a Unimat SL set up with a power feed. Uh, it's currently got a three jaw self centering chuck on it, a live center in the tail stock. Uh, it's set up with the slow speed attachment, which gives you an extra set of pulleys to use to uh, change the speed of the machine. Next one up is the standard Unimat SL with pretty much the standard equipment. This one has a four jaw independent chuck on it. Uh, Unimat or an ENCO, EMCO drill chuck on the tailstock. Have you noticed that every sticker today is round? Hmm. I've got about 13 rectangular and about 8 round. What is it guys? Do you not want to tessellate? And D, elliptical. Very strange. If you want to send me a sticker, send me an email to this address and if you'd like one of my stickers let me know and I'll send one to you anywhere in the world whether you've got a channel or not. 
do you know, I just want you to listen to this stuff going on. We've got people cutting the grass. We've got a delivery truck coming next door, which is squawking away. And all this is going on while I'm trying to video you. It's really difficult to work under these circumstances.